The main thing is, that I think is important, is that she wants to raise the minimum wage, but she wants everybody to make way more than that. So the best way the government can do that is to accelerate the return of new manufacturing jobs to America. When she ran in Ohio, not very far from here, also an emerging new manufacturing center. She won by twice when everybody thought she could because she, they knew she was a co-founder of the Manufacturing Caucus. They knew she had worked as Secretary of State and a Senator to promote manufacturing jobs and to protect them from unfair competition. And they knew that this election is about the future, but that your past performance is a pretty good indication of future leadership. So she knows we got to do that, but don't forget there's some other things we can do to make a lot of jobs in America. Well, I don't, let's talk about the carrier deal. You want to? Okay. You may blame them. I, I, I don't have to enlighten you. All you got to do is read the article on the board meeting that Carrier had about this decision. The first article that came out in the New York Times. And this is what I think the big problem with inequality is today. I do think, by the way, we need more. You didn't have as much loss when I was there because I enforced those things 80% more than President Bush did. But I do think, wait, wait. I do think these trade deals, one of the things we've learned that the auto workers learned in the Korean trade deal is that you can't make a trade deal unless it includes people who don't keep the deal or manipulate the currency. You've got to do that. On the other hand, Indiana is exporting cars to China. That very few people are doing that. So you got to have some kind of a rules of the road that are fair to everybody if you want to keep those jobs too. But here's what happened in the carrier case, in my opinion. I talked to Senator Donnelly, who's done a lot of work for you on this, and you should be proud of it. Um, they announced, according to this article, interviewing people in the board meeting, that their shareholders, which really means they're big, rich, activist shareholders, were disappointed that they didn't have a high enough stock price. And because of that, the president wasn't going to give his whole bonus. He made several million dollars last year. Now, keep in mind, Carrier made $2.9 billion, okay? They say they're going to save $65 million by moving this operation to Mexico. Wait, 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 wait. Where they have been, sir, since 1969, 24 years before NAFTA took effect. But anyway, the, here's the problem. Maybe they will because labor's so cheap. But they were making $2.9 billion. $65 million is a tiny fraction of their profit. The union offered to negotiate with them savings that would equal that or get very close to it. Hillary wants to give companies a 15% tax break if credit, if they share profits with their employees fairly. That means they'd come out ahead if they did that. And this is the main problem today, more than the big banks. The big banks now can't break Main Street again because of the Dodd-Frank bill the president signed. And that's why Hillary won New York so big, because they know there are 50 or 60,000 fewer people on Wall Street today than they were the day of the crash. New York's going with old-fashioned jobs now. New businesses, new entrepreneurs, young high-tech people, manufacturing jobs coming back to New York. So here's what the problem is. Until about, well, 30 years ago, this movement started to give shareholders precedence over workers, communities, customers. Before then, we all were taught, like somebody like me that went to law school 40 years ago, we were taught that corporations are not people, no matter what Citizens United said. We were taught that corporations 
are created by government, given certain privileges, and they owe something in return. Chief of which is more or less equal allegiance to their customers, their employees, their communities, and the shareholders. And believe it or not, you could fill this vast room with the studies that show that companies that produce a profit for their shareholders over a three to seven year period make more money over the long run than companies that have to show up and please the shareholders every year because you've got a hedge fund or a billionaire that wants to get their money back in a year and a day and get the capital gains. So Hillary says, give them a tax credit if they share profits and don't give the whole capital gains tax in a year and a day. If the companies are gonna be profitable over five years, let the thing go down over five years and don't reward people for pressuring companies to stick it to their workers, stick it to the communities, and frankly, often, I can give you examples where they stuck it to the customers just so they could get their money back in a year and a day. Now that is the fundamental problem driving a lot of the inequality today. And I hope that we can have an honest conversation all over America about it. Because this is another thing. I can't believe that we can't reach an agreement across party lines, racial lines, regional lines, everywhere else. It is crazy to let the finance tail wag the economic dog. People ought to be able to get a reasonable rate of return on their investment. And if not, they ought to have the freedom to sell their stock a lot of you have retirement in it, but it is crazy to set this up so that after all the work done here by those 2,400 people in Indiana, after they're producing, as Joe Donnelly told me today, higher profit margins this year than they had last year, for about 2.5% of the total profits of the company, they're going to throw them under the bus. You don't have to have that. We need a whole different system of carrots and sticks. We need to reward the companies that take care of their employees. We need to reward the ones that give college stuff. Reward the ones that have profit sharing plans for their employees. Reward the ones that believe their communities are important. And so, Hillary agrees with you, there should be some changes in our in our t trade policy. But the number one problem with this inequality today is represented by the reasons the carrier people themselves gave for what they did. Their shareholders wanted more money and their presidents paid by how happy the shareholders are. I think the greatest companies in America say, our customers, our employees, and our communities are the most important thing and the rest of us are along for the ride. We're supposed to make it possible for them to succeed. And so, look, this whole election comes down to this. Do you believe if we do the right things, we can all rise together again the way we did in the 1990s? I believe we can. 